This is Ms. Black, Open Campus Math 099. We are now in Module 14, and we are going to be talking about adding, subtracting, and multiplying radical expressions. If you recall, we've been working on radicals, which are roots, and we've been working how to evaluate them and simplify them. Now we're going to actually do the order of operations. I want you all to understand that everything we do is related to what we've done in the previous chapters. So I'm really not teaching anything new. It may look different because we're dealing with radicals, square roots, and cube roots, but the concepts are the same. So let's take a minute and look at our notes. If you recall, can you by now add 6x plus 3x? Well, sure you can. You know you can add 6x and 3x because they're like terms. So the basic rule of algebra is you can only add terms that are alike. In polynomial world, which was chapter 12, the reason why you can add 6x and 3x, what makes them alike, is they both have the same variable x. So when you add 6x plus 3x, what do you get? You get 9x, which means the thing, the term that's alike, stays the same. All you really added was the coefficients 6 and 3. Think back to the chapter on fractions rational world. When I ask you to add the fraction 1 third plus 1 third, can you add it? Sure you can. Why? Because the denominators are both threes. So when you add 1 third and 1 third, what do you get? Two thirds. You do not add the denominator. The part that's alike stays the same. What you added was the numerators. So the same is going to be true in, ra in radical world. To add roots, radicals, first of all, you have to make sure the radicals are alike. So what's underneath the root symbol, the radicand, must be alike. Then all you're really doing is adding the coefficients. So let's go up to the board and look at some examples. Okay, my first example says 6 square roots of x plus 3 square roots of x. Again, I'm asking you to add, so you must have like terms. What makes these alike is the radicand. What's under here is to be exactly alike. It is. So if I have six of these square roots of x's, and you have three of these square roots of x's, how many do we have? We have nine. We have nine what? Square root of x. The rule is to add, you must have like terms. The radicands must be alike. What's alike stays the same. What you're adding are the coefficients. Okay, let's look at example three. Five square roots of seven plus two minus 11 square roots of seven. If you look, we could use our vocabulary. There are three terms, three monomials here. Are they all alike? No. Who is alike? The five square root of seven and the negative 11 square root of seven are alike. So these terms we're gonna put together. We're gonna CLT, collect them. Again, five minus 11 is negative 6 with a square root of 7. We do not add inside the radical symbol. What's in the radicand stays the same. You're, all you're doing is putting together the coefficients. Now what about the plus 2? It's a whole number. Is a whole number like a root? No. So what do we do is we bring it down. Now, unfortunately, this answer is not written in the right form. In radical world, we do not like to put the constant in the back. And the reason why is if you put it in the back, then some of you are going to assume the 2 is part of the root, and it's not. So in radical world, we always write the constant first, and then we write the radical, the root. So this answer written correctly would be 2 minus 6 square root 7. And we would know we can't go on any further because, again, this says subtract, this is a whole number, this is a root, they're not alike, so we can't go on any further. That is our final answer. Okay, let's try another example. So if you look at your class notes, let's look at example four. We 
we have square root of 45 plus 3 square root 20. So go slow. What operation am I asking you to do? Add. The rule is regardless. To add, you must have like terms. Are we alike? No. How do you know that? You look inside the root. This is not exactly the same. A square root of 45 and a square root of 20 are two different things. They are not going to be the same decimal number, irrational number. So these are not alike, so we can't add yet. But wait a minute, we learned something. We learned in the previous module how to break down a root. We're going to factor this root. And if you remember to factor root, you need to work on what numbers? That's right, your perfect squares. So what perfect square number will factor or divide into 45? That would be 9. 9 times 5 is 45. So I'm asking you to do the square root of 9 and the square root of 5. Well, what is the square root of 9? That's 3. That's why it comes out. We could do that operation. Can you square root 5? Is there a number times itself that makes 5? No. So that's why that number stays inside. Now, let's look at the next part. We have plus 3 square root 20. The plus 3 is on the outside. You can't do anything with it, so you'll just bring it down. What we want to break down is a square root of 20. Remember, square root is an operation. It's, like, it's just like a fraction sign. You have to reduce. What perfect square is in 20? That's 4 times 5. So 4 is the perfect square that divides into 20. So we're going to do the square root of 4, the square root of 5. What is the square root of 4? That's a 2. It comes out. Can you square root 5? That stays inside. Now you have to be very careful. This 3 that was already on the outside, and now you have a 2 on the outside. And they're side by side. So what operation is that? Correct. That's multiplication. So 3 times 2 is 6 square root 5. Now look, you have like terms. 3 square root of 5 plus 6 square root of 5. Because the radicands are the same, you can add the coefficients. I have 3, you have 6. If we add it, we have 9. 9 what? Square root of 5. So the rules are always the rules. Things have to be alike to add. Okay, let's look at our class notes. Let's look at one more example. Okay. Let's look at example 7. Okay. So here we go again. All right. So example 7 says I have square root of 2 over 25 plus square root of 2 over 9. All right. I want to add. The rule is to add what's inside the root must be alike. These are not alike. They're not the same fraction. So let's talk about what we need to do. Well, I see a division bar here. Can you reduce or divide 2 and 25? No, that's in lowest terms. Can you reduce or divide 2 ninths? That's in lowest terms. So wait a minute. There's a square root symbol. And this square root symbol has a fraction, which we've already discussed. That means we're square rooting both the numerator and the denominator. So we could write that. Do the same thing here. This square root symbol belongs both to the numerator and to the denominator. Now, why does that help? Because look, don't you have perfect squares now? Right here. What is the square root of 25? Oh, that's a perfect square. That's 5. What is the square root of 9? That's a perfect square. That's 3. Can you square root 2? No, you cannot. So that's why the 2 stays inside. Now if you look, I'm still asking you to add. But now we have fractions. We have a numerator and a denominator. A numerator and a denominator. What is the rule? Adding fractions, easy as can be, all we need is an LCD. Here's where you use what you learned. I need a common denominator for 5 and 3. What would that be? Correct. That would be 15. So we will write each of these with denominators of 15. The rule is, if you change the denominator, you must change the numerator. So we look. How does a 5 become a 15? 
We times by three. Now everybody think about this. That's a whole number three and that's a square root of two. You cannot multiply them and make a six. The whole number stays on the outside and the root stays on the inside. Think about what this means. It means you have the square root of two three times. And a square root of two, and a square root of two, and a square root of two, if you add it up, would be one, two, three square roots of two. Remember, definitions never change. From arithmetic, multiplying by three means to write it three times. And if we write a square root of two three times and we add it up, we have three square roots of two. So rule of thumb, a whole number stays on the outside and what's inside the root stays on the inside. So this would be three square root two. Same thing here. We changed the denominator, a three became a 15. So we multiplied by five. So now we're gonna multiply by five. A square root of two times five. That's a root, it stays on the inside. That's a whole number, it stays on the outside. So we write five square roots of two. Now we can add. Adding fractions, easy as can be, all you need is an LCD. If you change the denominator, you must change the numerator. Write the bottom. The bottom is 15. Collect, add the top. Now look, can you add them? Three square root of two plus five square root of two. You sure can add them because the roots are alike. So if I have three and you have five, we have eight square roots of two. And we can't go on any further because this says to divide and eight and 15 do not divide by the same number. So that's your answer. So I hope you understand everything we did today in this video is reviewing rules from chapter 12. Basic concept, to add and subtract, you need like terms. In radical world, what's underneath the radical root symbol, the radican, must be alike. Have a good day.